here for the tour? Yes, I am. You have tickets, don't you? I Take can it. tell. Well, I got well, one right now. I'm going to tell. There we go. There's tickets right now. It's a fair change before you leave. So, 1865 was when the house was built. That we know from good records. We think the architect was John Wright, and we know it's in the Gothic Revival style. Yes, we will get inside in a minute. Yes, I talk too much, so please ask questions, you know, throw soft objects, leave if I'm still talking at five o'clock. <laughs> Gothic Revival suggests the great Gothic churches of Europe, of 14th century, 12th century, sawing spires, great tall glass windows, stained glass everywhere. This is nothing like that. Gothic Revival is a silly term, really, but it has some of those elements. Spires? Well, not quite. We've got finials, but on every high spot there is a finial. Those are not lightning and purely decorative, and they add height to the building. We have a lovely angled bay on the front here. This is the drawing room. Get lots of sunlight going in there because of that bay. That's very much a Gothic style. There was an application to demolish it. Uh, the first application was to put in a pub here, and the good citizens of Fairfield said, Oh, we don't want a pub in Victorian Fairfield. Yeah. Of course, we've got several now. Yeah. And that went down, so then they said, Okay, townhouses, we'll put in. We'll move that one back and put five other townhouses around here. Mm. And the citizens said, no, too much traffic. Of course, today, he had put up a high-rise like that thing. Exactly. So it sat here for a while with some fairly rugged individuals living in there. It really went down here. It was in very bad shape. In fact, I can show you the picture. I will show you a picture in a minute. I have it, but I have it lost. There was a time when, there, when that oh, was my. the view of the, oh, yeah. looking into the front here. Yeah. In fact, somebody told us that when they walked by on the sidewalk, the citizens here who were sitting in the couches and 
weeds would throw their beer bottles at them. <laughs> so it was it was either rescue or demolish. Right. And the heritage people said, you know, maybe there's something there underneath all the junk, underneath the many layers of paint, underneath behind the broken windows. And they started doing the research and they found that in fact the house had been built in 1865, which is very early for Victoria. That it was probably by a well-known architect called John Wright, which would make it very unusual for Victoria. That it is designed in the Gothic Revival style, which is very rare in Victoria. All of which added up to, hey, this building is worth saving. Mm -hmm. So people gathered together at the end of 1998, nine. Um, volunteers were called, what can we do? Can we turn it into some sort of a heritage resource? try and rescue it and we figured we I was involved already at that point uh, we figured three years we could have it all dressed up looking nice open to the public well 20 years later we're not finished it's ongoing um, partly because we've got perfectionists on our team of volunteers partly because I suspect it was worse than we thought when we started but when you start looking underneath, you realize that there are many layers to be removed. We didn't raise the house, but we did replace the entire foundations and the muck underneath, which included one dead raccoon, and, and spread a, a concrete skim over the mud. The, foundation is 18, 20 inches high, very little room to work in. But the end result, we think, is really successful and our aim was to make it right for when the original house was built, 1865. Hello. Hello. Are you coming on our tour today? We're coming on your tour. We're a little bit, we, we went home and had lunch. Ah, okay. Uh, you have a friend? Yes, yes, yes. he's okay. coming too. Good afternoon. Good. You are here for the tour too. You've been here before. I've been uh, here before. Good Third memory. time lucky. I tried everybody else and they said no. Uh, you have. Okay. Well then maybe I don't need to repeat what I said to them, which is basically the house was built in 1865 and was rescued over the last 20 years by a group of volunteers who... And I told her all of that. Okay, good. <laughs> the volunteers uh, were working with the Land Conservancy to begin with. Land Conservancy had financial troubles, so we bought it from them. Lock, stock and barrel. And it is now the Ross Bay Villa Society, a non-profit of course, run entirely by volunteers for the community. And we don't owe anybody anything. It's it's really a great success story. We've even got money in the bank for when we have to replace the roof, which we know we will have to do in due course. We checked recently, we put it on 23 years ago and it has a 20 year life warranty. So we know its life is coming to an end. But like all these things, money is always needed and I will be collecting. The porch, which is very much that style. If you look at some of those old people next time you're in Europe, look at the tops of the windows. They often have that little trefoil design. It's a nice way of ending the climax of the window style. A couple of other things I will mention about the outside. One is that because of 1865, there was very little uh, in the way of good wood manufacturing people in town. They couldn't make these things, turn columns like that, fancy windows like that. These were imported from San Francisco. So probably the contractors, the builders would bring in a shipload, as it were, and then architects would go see what they've got and pick out and say, well, yeah, we'll have one of those, two of those, and so on. We know, for instance, that a lot of it is redwood, California redwood. 
which obviously isn't local. We're really lucky to have this picture. It's in the BC archives. It's of the next family that moved in here after the Roscoe's. So it's dated 1889, but it is this porch. And it was a wonderful picture for us for restoring the porch. Because when we started work here, this whole, these pillars were gone. The whole thing had been filled in with two by fours and used doors and windows. It was being rented as a separate room. The porch was being rented as a separate room by the rascals who were living in here, who you also had a large grow up. So that's, that's been helpful to us because when we took the two by fours down, we realized that there should have been columns there. So we got columns made and so on to restore it as closely as we could. Okay. Please come in, into the dark. So if you look at these pictures back then, Victorian era. Who when, was taking them? No, no, when I look at these pictures yeah. back then, I believe they were not allowed to smile during the Victorian era. <laughs> that all of their pictures are solemn, dour. They are very solemn. Of course, they had to pose for maybe two minutes. Yes. And, yeah. and the children often are, are leaning up against something to keep them upright. And dogs and horses all move in the pictures <laughs> because it's such a long exposure. Uh, so I think that may be part of the reason why they weren't supposed to smile. Because if you try smiling for two minutes solid, it's going to be a disaster. But it was a solemn occasion, I guess, taking pictures. I'll show you two of the Roscoe's. We're supposed to wear these in here. We've seen in three components. There's the servants area, where we are now the family area in the middle, and the guest area at the front. They really are discreetly different, and you will feel the difference, you'll see the difference as we walk through. So bear that in mind. We're in the servants area now. When we started work here in 1999, January 2000, this was largely rotted out. It was in very, very poor shape. The rafters were there, but they were in rough shape. The plaster and that was mostly gone. The, even where the walls had been was hard to tell. The reason is the design, and it's an odd thing, but this is a nice little model of the house. And we're in here now. This is not an add-on. It's very typical of the period. Kitchen would be a single story extension rather than an add-on connected to the house. But look what the rain does there. It's gathered on this huge roof and then pours down there onto here. Rot, 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 all the way across. It was a disaster. All the eavesdrops, incidentally, were cedar originally, so they were almost all completely rotted out. So that's one of the reasons we had to do some major work here. Philosophically, our plan was to save everything that we possibly could that was authentic, was original. And if we couldn't, then we were going to replicate it as close as we could. We had one volunteer here early on as we were taking things apart. He would take the nails out and straighten them so that we could use them again. Same nails because that was the authentic what had been done. So this floor was rotted completely. We had to replace it. We replaced it with boards of the same width, same thickness, same wood. So they will weather and wear the way the others did originally. We think that the kitchen would have been here, there are various clues, and that there were two small storage rooms here, might have been bedrooms but more likely storage because they really are tiny. This one is now a regular bathroom, a toilet, sink, that sort of thing against my recommendations, I said they would have had an outhouse, we need an outhouse. The city said, Russell, shut up, we're having a bathroom. <laughs> we had to have indoor plumbing, it makes some sense. We also had to have a few other compromises. Electric light, 
this is not an oil lamp, it was originally. Sprinkler system, this is to protect our huge investment. Uh, motion detectors so that we don't get burgled. So there are those sorts of compromises, but otherwise, I think we've got it right. Tell me if you see something wrong. I didn't know, for instance, that willow patent china was even made in the 1860s. But one of our amazing group of volunteers is now retired from the museum where he was a furnishing specialist and he knows his willow pan. And we said we need some china of the period for the regular daily use. And he brought these in and each Saturday he comes by with something else to put on the shelves that are right for that mm. period. So all of these are 1860s style. This piece is not authentic to the house, but it's right for the period, and they would add something like it here. We know that they had a stove, a kitchen stove, probably exactly like this, but mm, so I should tell you about a couple of pieces of evidence that we have about this house, which has been extremely useful. I'm going to rush ahead for a moment and just tell you a bit more about Frank Roscoe. You are just up there was like, oh, yeah, I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> the worker. <laughs> Frank Roscoe's ghost. Who's a hardware dealer. He came here to help, well, to participate in the gold rush, but he realized the best way he could help was to service the gold rush people. So he teamed up with a couple of fellows called Fellows, Arthur Fellows and Alfred Fellows, and they made fellows from Roscoe Hardware. They did well selling shovels and spades and buckets and things to those who were moiling for gold up the Fraser River Gold Rush and then the Caribou Gold Rush. Did so well that after a year he went back to England, married his sweetheart Anna Letitia. They came out here and built the house and moved in, as I say, in the fall of 65. Had their first kid, second kid, third kid, fourth kid, fifth kid in the house to the point that they had to have not only a cook, but also a nursemaid, a nurse of some sort to help. And that may have been particularly so because Roscoe by this point was very active in the community. Somebody said to him, oh. so he did, and he was elected. So Francis Roscoe became Francis Roscoe MP, which was no easy thing in those days to get to Ottawa. You had to go via San Francisco and Chicago to get to Ottawa. But he was an MP for one term and then he didn't renew after that. In fact, he died fairly shortly afterwards, aged 48, leaving a widow and five children, not to mention the cook and the nurse girl. So Anna Letitia decided to pull up stakes. She had no family here. They didn't own the land on which they built the house. So the investment wasn't that big. But she had a lot of family back in England. Her father was a barrister in London and prosperous. So right soon after the death, she got on the boat, took the family to England. And as they were leaving, they had an auction. And I'm going to pass around the auction list because this has been, that's where that is. I've been looking everywhere. Excuse me. Damn. Right, auction list. They had an auction in this colonist, list of least an auction list in the colonist, listing all the things for sale, and that's become a shopping list for us. Yeah. What do we need to make the house feel <laughs> right? <laughs> well it says we need a broadwood piano, we better get out and buy a broadwood piano. It says we need an Albion kitchen stove. We went out and found an Albion kitchen stove made in Victoria. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So that's been the story of a lot of the things that are in here. They are based on what was on the auction list. Very little had survived in the house originally from 150 years ago. One piece I'll show you.
Is, it the, is it the authentic whatnot? <laughs> no, but I, I will test you later. Why not? It's listed in the. Oh, there's a, uh, uh, one everybody has used, uh -huh. one slightly used cook uh -huh. and one slightly used nanny. <laughs> it should, it should be. Yeah. <laughs> the only things we actually haven't got <clears throat> off that list, I think, are the gun, the horse, and the cow. Ah. The okay. horse and the cow were just pushing it. How, who's going to look after them? <laughs> and the gun, I think nobody really wanted to have a, cow, a gun around you. So we think probably that the cook would have been in charge of the horse and the cow. They had a carriage. Actually, that's the other thing. We didn't get a carriage. And we had some renter chickens. One of our volunteers has uh, got some little chicks from, uh, from a variety of chicken called Brahma. And she's raised them. They're great big chunky things, and she brings them in here on Saturdays generally. This Saturday she's cycling around Iceland, but that's her choice. <laughs> but we, we often have the Brahma chickens browsing in the yard, which is really, really nice. So that's the shopping list for us. That's one of the things that has told us a lot about the way they lived. It, it tells us the types of furnishings and therefore gives you a sense of the atmosphere of the house. The other thing we have results from, again, one of our amazing volunteers who spends late into the night looking online for genealogy. And she found that after Mrs. Roscoe, the widow, and the children moved back to England, the kids grew up, they married, well, four of them did. They married, grew up, married, children, yada, yada. And she found a great great grandson in Chicago, name of Robin, very nice young man. And she wrote, told him, we were working on the Ross Bay Villa, restoring it. He said, the the what? Never heard of it. Understandable, I suppose, your great great grandson in Chicago. I couldn't tell you the name of my great great grandparents' house. So we said, well, come and visit. He did. Really charming young man, fell in love with the house. He said, oh, by the way, I've got Great Great's diary. Well, we swooned. Yes, please, can we have a copy? And it's a really helpful book. I haven't, I can't show it to you, but we have a copy of the whole thing. It's two years in the house, no, four years in the house. And then afterwards, Mrs. Roscoe continues over in England writing about the family there. I'm less interested in that, but the four years here is a gold mine for life, the way they lived. She talks about the servants, the difficulty they had keeping cooks. People would poach cooks. I don't mean that physically. I mean, they would, they would come for dinner and they say, oh, what a nice cook. By the way, would you come to work for us for 10 pounds a year or more? And so there was a big turnover of cooks and even worse nursemaids single females were at a huge premium in victoria in those days the population was 90 percent men they'd come for the gold rush so any females getting off the boat tended to get an offer as soon as they came down the gangplank and if not by the time they'd been here a few months and got known they were married off so Anna Letitia talks in the diary about the difficulty they had keeping nurse girls and cooks. She says among the cooks, our favourite was Ah Chin, who was so nice and kind with the children, which is a nice touch. It adds something again to that, another dimension to the family. It's not just genealogy, these are real people. Go on, Nick, as you like. So, oh, uh, are you Nick? Sorry. Nick. Nick. Oh. I appreciate the, uh, the prompt. The floor is actually the same as this floor, which is simply canvas. It's just a sail floor. We found nails around the floor edges with threads on them, showing us that there had been a canvas, painted canvas floor here originally on the work areas. It was perfectly normal. So they just said, Nick, go and get some sail canvas. These are the measurements. So I went down to the 
uh, June Brothers, the sale makers, and got the cloth and just painted it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you slip on through? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Yeah. These guys out, would you? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Cheers. That's some of my volunteers leaving who spent the morning here making dinner. Well, sort of dinner. They'll be making peas, carrots. Parsnip, asparagus, beans, sliced potatoes, pies. It's all for a dinner party. We're going, we've got the china, we've got the cutlery, now we need the food. So that's the project. In 2000, when we began here, this was the kitchen. Nice, big, bright kitchen. But it wasn't originally the kitchen. It can't have been. It doesn't make sense to have a kitchen this big when your bedrooms are that tiny. Why not make this something else? Well, when we started restoring the okay. okay. Okay, this is the other small bedroom. We're now at the point of establishing one big bedroom and two small bedrooms. <laughs> This is, in fact, rented to the Old Cemetery Society. It's their headquarters. They do all their research here. People who need to know about anybody buried anywhere in Victoria will find it out from these folks. It's a very good match for us, and it's a nice little bit of revenue for us. Mm -hmm. So we're delighted to have them with us. And this little room, which wasn't here the last time you came here, is well it's a closet oh. uh, you've seen one but how often do you get to see a closet it's in progress we're in the process of restoring it uh, we've made two of the shelves there are more to come bit by bit there's a I, it's those pictures is that what you think it might have been yes like? oh. those are actually from point ellis and they show the way the shelves were uh, sort of dovetailed at the corners very ingenious and they're taking hours with each one to make them the same way. Oh, for China. they would have kept their china in here. The, the best quality, uh -huh. perhaps, yes. Right. Silverware, yeah. anything that they need to sort of guard, they might have even locked the door. But there's yeah. also a possibility that they had a commode in here. Uh -huh. Commode was a, was a toilet that looked like a chair. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. it's disguised as a chair, but you think about those guests that they're having for dinner. It's pouring with rain. They need a leak. There's an outhouse out there. It'd be much handier if there was a little something in here. And you'll notice there's a vent in the ceiling. That's original. So maybe that's got something to do with it. Huh. Maybe it was for guests. Maybe it was for family. Mm -hmm. You've got a very pregnant mum. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to go out to the outhouse at two o'clock in the morning. Guest area. <clears throat> so guests would have arrived on horse or in a carriage. Mm -hmm. They would have rung the bell. Archie mm -hmm. would have come running right to the door. They would the guests hat, perhaps, coat, whatever. The guests might have warmed themselves. Cold, wet day. Or they may simply have dropped off their calling cards. Mm -hmm. And so Archie would say, Oh, Mr. Derwick Drake is here. And uh, Anna Letitia would have said, Tell him I'm not home. <laughs> or whatever story is going around. Of course, in those days, ladies would just drop their cards. They wouldn't come in. They just drop their cards to pay respects to show them they're visiting. Instead of taxing. Instead of all that couple of weeks ago. Ooh. It's not even in place completely because we haven't got the chimney hooked up yet. But that is an original thimble in the wall there. So, so there was a stove here at some point. 
And we think it would have been there because the logical place it doesn't block the way into the dining room. So that's ours because we found the thread nailed around the edges that had been a canvas core floor here. So they made a great big table and set this thing up on it so that they could climb up and paint on it. And then they painted it 35 times, 35 layers of paint here. It's all hand done with some screening. The, uh, the central picture is screened, so the woodwork is all combed. It's incredibly labor intensive. It's a design we found on a house of the same period from um, Fort Townsend across the border. So this is where we're making all that fake food for, for the, for the dinner party that we're setting up. The, the china is absolutely right for the period. This is 1860s, a magnificent set, just brilliant. And the cutlery is all right for the period. The whole lot looks right, it's just nothing to eat. So we really felt we had to have something to show people. Now, I don't know if we're going to have a turkey or a boar's head or something over there. That would be nice, but that's another day. Yeah, and this is a soup tureen. It is yeah. indeed a hell of a yeah. soup tureen. It's well. beautiful, yeah. absolutely beautiful. And it's the sort of thing nobody wants anymore. No, if, right. if, if you it's look too in the auction, you can get a, yeah. a huge soup tureen, yeah. or you can get these great big pieces of furniture. Yeah. Because yeah. if you've got a 600 square foot condo, there's no room for it. No, right. So I said there's one piece of furniture authentic, we think, to the house, and that's the bookcase in the corner there. You'll see how beautifully it fits. One of our volunteers who was raised in this house as a child 70 years ago, his family lived here for, I think, about 30 years. When they moved out, they took the pot, the cupboard with them. But then latterly, we found Mike, and Mike found us, and he said, oh, we've got this bookcase that came out of the house and so they donated it back again. And we think it is authentic original for the house. Mm. The style is right, the placing is right. There's a stamp on the back of it from the Craig Flower Manor farm where they had a big workshop, mm. so we think it was made there. But that's the only thing that is actually original for the house. The rest of it is what might have been. I can spawn. Uh, probably, yes. Yeah, from that period they would be. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Huh. Isn't that beautiful? The elephant's still looking for them? <laughs> they would have been bone, not ivory. Yeah, no, no, I wouldn't want to take it anyway. It's a set. No, it's That's lovely. Yeah. So, oh, is the ceiling the, the ceiling rose, rose is original? Yeah. Okay, so uh -huh. they didn't put this for a time, they had that, that chin... Oh, uh, the chin ceilings. Chin yeah. ceilings? No, that was later. That was uh -huh. later. Yeah. Uh -huh. that, yeah. This is absolutely right. It was painted uh -huh. over and painted over, but we scaffolded up there and stripped it back. Yeah. And we think there would have been an oil lamp like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't know exactly what it, what it would have been like exactly, but we, our furnishings guy, we said we need an oil lamp for the dining room, and he said, okay, see what I'm trying to found that in Texas. Wow. And it spring loaded, you can pull it down, fill up the fountains oh. with, with oil and yeah. light it, and then and push then it back shot. out of the way. Oh, okay. And Anna Letitia talks about dinner parties where after dinner, a chin would come and fold up the table uh -huh. and they would dance really? in here. Oh my goodness. Isn't that a lovely picture? Oh. And oh. we've got a fire burning there, the ladies are wearing great crinolines, yeah. and they're dressed to the nines. There they are, Francis and Anna Letitia wearing their Sunday best. Well, actually, I don't know what day of the week the pictures were taken. It's a picture probably taken for when Frank was elected MP. Mm -hmm. uh, they are in the National Archives in Ottawa, those two, so that's where they're copied from. 
And I mentioned outside William Roscoe, the man after whom the Roscoe you know, ginger plants were named. This is him. This is Frank's grandfather, not only a botanist, but also an MP for Liverpool, England. The wallpaper, Anna Salt uh, mentions in the diary, managed to strip off. They got some of it off, but they left some and papered over that. So what we've got is very badly damaged, but it gave us the color, it gave us the pattern. We knew we'd got an English rose and a French fleur-de-lis, so we recreated it as best we could, had that made for us in England to match. And it's very similar to a paper that was on the British House of Commons that were rebuilt after a disastrous fire in the 1840s. William was an MP, he would have known about it, he very likely would have taken the family touring the new Houses of Parliament in London, and Frank might have seen that paper. And don't forget, he's a hardware dealer here in Victoria, he's making five trips back to England in the period that he lived here, mm -hmm. partly shopping, partly for fun, see the family and so on, so he could have bought anything over there he wanted for the house. Yeah, you know that's yeah. oh. That's surprisingly big. I mean, with all the little rooms. Yes. Like little it's only 1,200 square feet. The space is not that big really? for right. the size of the family. Wow. 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 So there are back to back fireplaces here. You saw the one in the other room. These are the two heated oh, spaces yeah. in the house oh. apart from the kitchen. Yeah. Are those poppies in there? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. just for decoration. We, one of the things, the city will not allow open fires in here, and you can sort of see why. We don't want to anyway, it's too dangerous yeah. when you spent the 20 years working on restoring it, you don't want to lose it all to a fire. Okay. You notice the bookcase in the other room? These two were made by one of our volunteers to match. They're made of walnut, the same wood. They're absolutely identical. And he did it all without power tools. He wow. refuses to use power tools. Huh? So I think that's another tribute to the amazing volunteers we've got. Oh, he's probably not on uh, Facebook, I, I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's faux marble. It's not real marble. It's slate. And we daren't restore it because it would all the faux finish would disappear. It looks to me as if it's been much stained with tobacco smoke or other smoke. As I said, there was a big grow up in here. So we're leaving it the way it is at the moment. Oh, no. If we get bold and learn how to do faux marble, well, that's another story. There's a story about the wallpaper over here. This room was largely green, sort of yellowy green when we got here. There's a picture of it in 1998, the last occupant. That sponge work, very fine artwork there, is the top of this arch. And this, of course, is the, the lovely bay, which I was extolling earlier, and they filled it up with demons. Anyway, the wallpaper had been painted green. It's a 1940s, 50s wallpaper, then a 1930s, 1900, probably 1890, and the second paper that the the uh, Roscoe's put on here, the 1880 paper and the original 1865 paper. We had this replicated for us. It's about well, 20 years ago now, and it's faded, seriously faded. The original is much brighter and the colors are stronger. Uh -huh. So we think we'll probably remake that paper ourselves. Uh -huh. I think we can make it better uh -huh. than the people did when they made it for us. Uh -huh. Because we know how now. Uh -huh. So this carpet was made for us in England, so I'm not sure for this room. It arrived in a roll about 18 inches wide. So we laid a strip down and cut it, and then another strip and cut it and so on and stitched them all together one by one. And then we bound all around the edges so it can be taken out very easily. And beaten, well I say easily, you've got a lot of furniture in there. But you would take it out and beat it in the, in the springtime. Um, they didn't have vacuum cleaners. That's another job for Ah Chin. <laughs> Jeez. 
So they had have an option to do all of that kind of work. And who else? You know, yeah. Like just like, yeah, and he probably did get 10 pounds a year or something. <laughs> but he had a room on board. There was that. He probably sent nine of that back to China. We don't know anything more about him. Mm -hmm. Couldn't track him. Mm -hmm. So our volunteers are big on textiles because Colleen is so good at that and those sorts of things. She made these curtains. Which would be really cozy in winter. You could close that window right off on a cold day, have the curtains draw right across, yeah. fireplace going. I said the drawing room. Why is it called the drawing room? Because <laughs> after dinner, the ladies would withdraw. This was the withdrawing room originally. Gentlemen would stay in there, smoke cigars, drink brandy tell stories. Ladies would come in here and smoke cigars and drink and tell other stories, <laughs> or play the Broadwood piano, which is on that auction list, or use the Singer sewing machine, which is on the auction list, or play with the whatnot. You were asking about the whatnot? No. Uh, no I you were asking about the whatnot. Like Back to it. Is that piece of furniture? That is officially a whatnot. This is called a whatnot. It is. It really oh my is. goodness! I don't make these things up. Well, <laughs> oh. Why not? Yeah, we were very pleased to find I that. I thought whatnot just meant here's a bunch of stuff. Well, exactly. I thought that was, it was covered in whatnot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so why would piano you? Piano we found right. up in Grand Forks. Ah, oh, beautiful. The pictures are reproductions, of course, but the frames are all original to the period. Oh. We looked at the auction list again a little while ago and said, John, we've forgotten the card table. We need a card table. Uh, so two weeks later, he came back with this lovely card table. Oh. It's original, 1860s, lovely turned legs, never been painted. The top opens up, base covered for playing cards. He found it in Value Village. Yes, yeah. you, this time you can use the back door. Yeah, yeah. Where do I put the money? There's the pot. You think it's big enough? <laughs> yeah. 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 the left hand one, so let's just forget the opinion. 